Hello, 5 Minute Friday number 31, and I said it was going to be something completely different, and it is. It's how to do some casting without degassing. So, I've got some uh, silicon moulds that I've made, and these are for casting some game pieces for the uh, game Settles of Catan. Um, so, here's a, a desert piece, uh, sheep, forests, if you know Catan, do uh, comment below. And we've tried all kinds of different um, resins, and the one that has by far worked the best without any complicated degassing is this stuff, Zencast P2. And it cures really, really quickly. It's a two part, um, it's got the, the resin, and you might notice that it sort of separates and it's got like a bit of a residue. So we'll give that a shake, and the shake aerates it, but it isn't too much of a problem. I've also noticed the one time I did shake it, um, the, I forgot to shake it rather, it didn't actually make that much of a difference to be honest with you. So uh, the second part of it is the catalyst basically and that hardens it and I'll do try and do a time lapse of that going off. So this stuff is super easy to do. All you need to do is get a plastic cup, uh, tear some scales and it's just a 50-50 mix by, vol uh, by mass rather, not by volume. So I happen to know from a bit of trial and error that it's 70 grams of And when I first started, I was really sort of adding one milliliter at a time to try and get it absolutely perfect. And experience has taught me that there's basically not a huge amount of point. So I'm gonna try and go for one, four, four, near enough. I'll give this a quick shake. There you go, it hasn't loosened completely, there's still some of that residue. But it doesn't actually matter too much. And traditional casting knowledge would say that you've got to degas absolutely perfectly and draw a vacuum, and that might well be true for some really complex models, but for this stuff, not so much. So we're going for 144. That'll do. And if you add a few millilitres more or less of one or the other, it's just going to be curing faster or slower. Now the trick is that I found is just hold it, really should be using silicon gloves, but hold it and just feel for it. This is, actually does an exothermic reaction as it cures and it heats up and I can feel the heat in that. It's starting to build and experience again just tells me when it's starting to go off. If you do it to this too much then basically it starts to set in the cup. But that, I can feel that warm. Now that's probably not as hot as a cup of tea, but like a, I would say probably warm water out of the tap. I can feel that there. So we'll pour now, and this is into the silicon mold. Uh, pour in, basically just pour in the highest spot and let it run in slowly. Now this end one is gonna be somewhat problematic and probably to be honest, wood benefit from degassing if I was going to go down that route but the cheats way is basically just to run the spatula over it and just force out some of those air bubbles. I'm just going to top these ones up a little bit. And can you see it's actually getting somewhat more opaque in the um, in the container and that's its setting and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So that time lapse was about three minutes. It'll probably take about 10 minutes for them to go off totally because it is an exotherm. The place where the, there's the most mass generates the most heat and that's where it goes off most quickly. So consequently, around the edges here, it's not particularly set and that'll probably take um, a few more minutes just to go off actually. And what I tend to do, even though you're not gonna play with it, is just pull back the mold a little bit. And you see, like, it's almost a bit sort of waxy, like a hot candle wax at the corner, so it's not worth messing with. Another little trick, just see if they're um, they're ready to demold. You just check the top for uh, for heat, and they should start to cool. This one is really quite hot, actually. This lesser that could probably be taken out now, but we'll wait till they've all cooled down to that sort of uh, ambient temperature. Because so I've checked those, and those are just a little bit above room temperature. Um, so we can demold it. Now I've seen other um, resins that have to be sprayed with, you know, 
release agents and things like that. And it was always a little bit intimidating. And this P2 resin is absolutely fantastic, uh, provided you're obviously molding silicon. So just pop the silicon a little bit and the part comes straight out. There we go. Let's have a zoom in on this. And you can see the level of detail is absolutely incredible. It's a little bit low light in here at the moment. So these parts were originally 3D printed, um, but you can actually see the 3D print layer lines on this, such as the level of uh, detail reproduction. So I'll just pop the other, uh, the other molds out. And this mold has probably been used, I don't know, maybe 60 or 70 times now and it's still performing just as well. That's the sheep. And this one is... These are the forests. Now, for the people who want to recreate absolutely perfect detail, this is one of the original 3D printed pieces. And you can see we've got perfect cones at the top. Compare that here and they're a little bit rounded off and that's because we've got tiny little air bubbles at the top. Now, the purists will say, well, that's the whole point in degassing. But to be quite honest, I shook that really vigorously seconds before I poured it. I have done it where I've left it for, you know, done it half an hour before and it's, um, it's not been as good as that, but it's been 99% of the way there. So I just thought I'd share that with you because 3D printing is very time consuming. If you're reproducing lots of parts, then P2 Zencast casting resin is definitely a product that you'll be interested in. So if you like these videos, you like 3D printing, home CNC and hobbyist content, do like, subscribe and comment.